What's up, God damn it? This is Vincent from the Acacia Strain, and you're watching PitCam.TV. God damn it. Hi, I'm Monica with PitCam, and I'm here with Vincent from the Acacia Strain. Hi, Vincent. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm all right. It's very nice out. So. Yeah, I know. It's, it's blooming. Yeah. That's Berlin for you. Yeah. Um, the Acacia Strain uh, are described as, or your official bio states, Acacia Strain are anger. Could you? You didn't know that. No, I, I, <laughs> you haven't read it know. yourself. I, I like it. <laughs> well, could you elaborate a little bit for me? What do they mean by that? Uh, we're just uh, we play angry music for angry people. I mean, we're not necessarily angry people. Um, maybe inside, but on the outside, when we're doing stuff like this or just walking around town or doing anything, we're really just we're happy people, um, and we we use our anger when we're on stage. You know, it fuels our live performance, and, and I feel music and art and stuff like that is a good way to release, you know, negative emotions like anger and, and hatred and stuff like that. So we use, we use that to, I guess, to, to help us, to aid us on stage. And then when we're out and about on, and on the town or doing whatever, we just, you know, we live our lives. Yeah. If, if you read your, your lyrics, um, they're all... Mostly about what's wrong with the world. Right. Um, what what would you say, in your opinion, what what's the biggest threat to society today? I think we're the we as human beings are the biggest threats to ourselves. You know, we're self-destructive. Right. You know, and uh, it's not it's not really one thing. It's it's a multitude of everything kind of mashed up together. Um, and I feel like there's nothing we can do about it. You know, it's just how, it's just who we are. It's in our nature, it's in our DNA to just be mean, evil, and self-destructive. So you kind of use your lyrics to deal with this frustration that you feel about yeah. things. I mean, definitely. It's not like I don't know that I'm not like that. You know, so when I'm writing about humanity and, and all the evil, I'm not keeping myself out of it. I'm including myself into it. You know, so. Um, you're straight edge, right? Yeah. Um, has that affected, or does it affect the way that you view the world and the people in it? Not really. I mean, straight edge is a life choice that I, I chose for myself, and I'm not the type of person to pass judgment on on people for the choices they've made. You know, um, I believe that we're all equal, um, whether you're straight edge or you're not straight edge or you're religious or not religious. Is we're all people. And you know that's what it all boils down to. I look down on people for being people, not for being, you know, for drinking a beer. But still, being straight edge, you're more often in a situation where you get to observe people at their worst, wouldn't you say? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, never have being being drunk in my entire life. It's definitely kind of easier to watch from the outside, you know, and and just watch these people at their most self-destructive moments I think a lot of people anyways some people are quite charming and easy to get along to when they're drunk but for the most part it's it's kind of a mess what do you think you would have been like as a drunk what I would have been like yeah. extremely violent extremely <laughs> angry and not very easy to get along with and that's one of the reasons I don't do it because I would have been very I'd be a mean mean drunk person you'd be, you'd be bad at it oh yeah oh yeah you know, your true colors come out when you're yeah, drunk and exactly. just mean. Well, I want to talk to you about something that you briefly mentioned when we did uh, a tattoo interview with you. Okay. You showed us a, a tattoo that says, Hated. Uh, everybody in my band actually has this one. We got this one together. We did a tour, we did a tour with four Christian bands, and we were the only non-Christian band on it, so we all got burning Bible tattoos with uh, Most Hated 09 because no one on that tour wanted to talk to us at all. It was just like we were the ha most hated dudes on the entire tour. And you um, mentioned uh, being on tour with only Christian bands and feeling yeah. like the odd band out. Yeah. Um, is it really like that? Do you have a feeling that, is there a us and, and, and them? I mean, not when it's mixed, but it, we were the, literally the only band on an all, the, the other three bands are Christian bands. And I, I know they tried to, oh, excuse me, they tried to, you know, 
make everyone feel comfortable and stuff like that. But when it all came down, you know, it was there was a definite separation. And uh, I'm not saying that, you know, in life there's a separation, but when it's three on one, it kind of it kind of boils down to it. And we we definitely, I don't know if we felt uncomfortable, but we just felt like we weren't part of the part of the gang, you know. And uh, we try not to do that kind of stuff. But it's like I said, it's it's human nature. You can't help it. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, and there's nothing you can really do about it. You know, even Impending Doom is on this tour, and it's two non-Christian bands and them, and you know, I'm sure they feel really uncomfortable sometimes. We're talking about you know not believing in God and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's 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 hard. You know, if you believe in something, you believe in something, and it's it's, it's hard to not you know talk about it. I guess. So it's actually uh, a big issue on tour. You know, like do the guys or the bands do they? S behave differently or how does it sort of become uh, a thing on tour with Christian and non-Christian bands? I mean there's a lot when we were on tour with a bunch of Christian bands they were obviously on stage saying you know they love Jesus and this song goes out to God and stuff like that and that was the reason a lot of kids came out to the shows so when up I'm, I'm on stage I have to censor myself you know and I was told I can't say a lot of things that I wanted to say just because I didn't want to like a lot of people didn't want me to say it because it would have offended people or whatever you know which is it's weird because i thought you know the music is about self-expression if you can't say what you want on stage you might be you might as well just be you know in a fascist regime i mean that's that's the way i look at, at it but at the same time when you're i'm sure when you're a christian band and you're on tour with a bunch of non-christian bands there's not a lot of Christians in the crowd, so you can't really open up and say, "Well, I love God and I love Jesus," because you'll just get looked down upon. And it, it must be—it must be hard. I mean, I know from experience when I was on tour with a bunch of Christian bands, not being able to say what I wanted to say without getting, you know, ousted or yelled at. It must be the same, uh, same for Christian bands. But I mean, it. A lot of the times we try and not even bring that dynamic into play. You know, there's a lot of uh, religious talk that religious conversations that go on that get started on this tour and I kind of say listen guys let's not even talk about it you know what's the what's the point in getting in an argument where you know a side isn't going to believe b side and, and vice versa no one's going to convert just because someone comes up with a valid argument if you believe what you believe in I mean it's if your beliefs are strong it's re it's really hard it's going to be really hard for someone to make you think otherwise you know do you think do you have mostly non-christian fans do you think with the occasional strain I'd say so um Mostly because a lot of our lyrics are about, you know, stuff that your typical Christian wouldn't want to hear about, you know. Um, but there are some really open-minded people out there, you know. And it, it, it's it's funny to say, and it's hard to believe for some people, but there are a lot of open-minded Christians out there. You know, a lot of kids hit me up on my Twitter or whatever, and they're like, I'm really, I'm Christian, but I fucking love your band. Like, I don't care what people say. It's it's your music and your lyrics really speak to me, you know, and and it's open to interpretation. So, and I'm not gonna deny a fan, you know, just because of what they believe in, you know, as long as they're not believing in. I don't know. I, you can believe whatever you want. I don't, as long as they're not like super, you know, ignorant and racist. I mean, I don't really care. You can believe in a flying spaghetti monster or worship Scientology. I don't give a shit. <laughs> if my music, if our music does something to you, my lyrics speak to you, then. I mean, thanks, I guess. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that whole um, Christian metal scene thing? Because I think for us as Europeans, it kind of hit us almost like a wave because we're not used to being surrounded by that. And suddenly it was just like a whole bunch of Christian bands and everybody was like, where did they come from? Yeah. What, what was it like in the US? It kind of hit us like a wave too. It was weird. Like I, I'm actually, it didn't really hit us like a wave. It was kind of a general thing. It was a general progression. You know, there was Christian band here, Christian band there. And you're like, whatever like I don't really understand it because you know punk and hardcore is you know it's it's and this and metal is you know anti-establishment anti-religion anti so there's bands pop popping up here and there and you're like well I know they're Christians but just because they're all Christian and they're in a band doesn't mean they're a Christian band and then bands started coming out that were straight singing about Jesus death metal about God like in a positive way and you're just like 
fuck is going on? And it started, really started garnering some notoriety. It's just, it really confuses me, you know? And I'm sure it confuses you guys too, because like you said, it just all of a sudden yeah. just got pushed in your face. And, and a lot of the Christian bands I tour with, or I know, I'm just like, have you guys been to Europe? And they're like, no. I'm like, you might want to keep like a low profile on the Christianity stuff because they're not, it's not like America, you know, like the Christian right is, is gigantic in America. And, and from what I've experienced in Europe, especially in the hardcore metal scenes is that you guys don't really, you're not really into it. Uh. I think that's cool personally. <laughs> um, because, and pardon my saying, but it's 2011. How can you still believe in God? Like seriously. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I just really want to know. I don't think you'll ever get that answer, no. though. No, never. Why do you feel that the, the bands need to define themselves as Christian bands? I mean, why can't they just say, we're in a band, we love metal, and by the way, we're Christian. Why do they have to say we're a Christian band? What's, it, why, what's, what's the difference? I really couldn't answer that question. <laughs> it baffles my mind. Like, seriously, I don't, I don't understand it, and I don't think I could ever understand it unless I was in a Christian band. I mean, it's like, I guess they're taking the church and converting it into music, and that's their way of saying, oh my God, I love Jesus and I love music. But, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. But it, it almost seems like a, a marketing technique, doesn't it? Because I once got a friend request on MySpace like years ago, and they were like, hey, we're a Christian band from, you know, they didn't they didn't even present themselves on what, what kind of music they were doing. It's just like, hey, we're a Christian band. I was like, well, how a, is that going to appeal to It's them? an automatic built-in audience, you know, how many yeah. Christians are in the world, you know. Uh, if you just come out and say you're, uh, you're a metal band, a lot of people are just like, oh, it's another metal band. But if you say we're a Christian metal band, the Christian kids will automatically go, well, I can listen to this and my parents won't mind because it's Christian, you know. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can listen to death metal. I can have crazy right-wing parents who are super conservative and won't let me listen to, to Slipknot, but I can listen to this band because they sing about Jesus, you know. But isn't it kind of arrogant to assume that you're going to go for it as soon as they say that they're Christian? To just assume that that's the way? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> 100% arrogant, but, exactly. you know, what can you do? You can't, you can't stop it. You think it's going to change? Because, as we said, it is a wave in a way. And yeah. um, I mean, I feel like music is cyclical. Um, stuff always rises and falls, rises and falls. Like, when I started going to shows, there was a, a giant line in between hardcore and metal. Yeah. And then as the years went on, hardcore and metal kind of became one. And there was a, a giant unity between metal and hardcore. And then, and then it happened again where metal kind of split from hardcore and there was, you know, the hardcore bands and the metal bands, and now it's kind of coming back into that. And I think Chris, the Christian the Christian music will kind of do the same thing because all music is cyclical. Like, think about when, you know, in the 50s, you know, when rock and roll was new, 20 years down the road, f music from the 50s was popular again. You know, so it's kind of like that same thing. But in hardcore metal, I think it's like every five years or so because the kids who started going to shows grow up, Five years later, they stop going to shows and don't care anymore, so the new kids come in and it ushers yeah. in a whole a whole thing. It's a weird cycle. Yeah. Well, like you said, you've been around long enough to sort of see the hardcore scene yeah. change. Um, now, we, I just talked to Whitechapel right. about this. Um, you know, like, is the hardcore scene about music anymore, or is it about fashion? I think it's definitely about music. You know, when you're talking about real, real bare bones hardcore, it's always been about the music and always will be the, about the new hardcore scene, well, you know, right. with the deathcore kids. And uh, everything. That is, you know, is spotty. I think it's 50 50. Like with deathcore, if you want to use that word, it's a, I think it's a gross, evil word. But uh, I think maybe 50 to 60% of the kids that go to shows are legitimately there for the music. And then you get these stragglers that come in, you know, the 40 percenters that are like, well, I just want to buy a shirt that's really bright colors and with a band logo on it so I can be seen wearing that shirt. You know, it's like a, it's like to them, band merchandise is just like another, like a clothing company, you know, like a Carhartt or something, you know. But uh, I believe that 
for the most part, kids are... See, that's, that's so hard because there's just so many different subgenres and all that bullshit, but like, for the most part, especially on this tour, I'd say it jumps up to 90%, you know? But then you have bands, and I'm not gonna name names, where kids just go to the shows because they're what's cool at the time, and they want to be seen wearing their shirt, and they want to do their hair all cool or whatever, and wear the tightest jeans possible. And I mean, I don't know. It's. I wish I could. I can't say any band names because I don't want to. <laughs> but. Um, but you're nicer than the architects because they offended everyone when we interviewed well, them, so including you. Arch yeah. <laughs> they call you a teddy bear. Yeah, I'm a, I guess I am. <laughs> Thingy Bob um, from Acacia Strain. He's a fucking teddy bear. <laughs> Architects doesn't give a fuck, that's why. I'm not trying to offend anybody right now. Um, that's okay. But yeah, uh, there's a definite trend in the music scene that non-true fans, like people who don't really give a fuck about the music, they just want to be seen at the show, they just want to be seen wearing the t-shirt. It kind of bums me out. They just want to take a picture, put it on their Facebook profile, and, and be done with it. But those kids won't be around for long because, you know, like any trend hopper, they'll just jump on to the next one. So you're not really worried about the music? I'm not, I'm not worried scene. at all. We're not a trendy band, I don't think. And, uh, you know, you'll find out who the trendy bands are when they break up a year from now. We'll be, we'll be around forever, I guess. You're actually one of the few bands, aren't you, in this sort of like popular hardcore scene that you've been around for a while. Because you get so used to bands coming together, releasing one album, and then they're gone. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Because that, that's not the way it was, you know, before, you know, in the early days, to say it like that. Well, what happened is a couple bands got together and made good music, and then everyone in the world went, I want to be in a band. You know, I really want to be in a band. And I really want to go on tour. But when they don't get huge right away, those bands just break up, you know, and that's, it's, it's really about staying power and it's really about uh, what's, what you have right here, you know, what you have in your heart. And if you don't have it in your heart, then there's no real point in making music anyways, you know. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been in this band for 10 years and I was in bands prior to this. I mean, I'm 29 years old. I've been doing it as long as I can remember. I don't know how to do anything else. So for me, I do what I love and I love what I do and what what other point is there to living than doing that you know mm. I mean I may I may hate the human race and I may hate I may I may think that there's no point in in life and there's no point in us even being on this earth but I do have a philosophy that is though there is no point in being here you're here so you might as well make the best of it you know, and that's that's what a lot of people fail to fail to realize. They just say, well, life sucks, fuck it. You know, you can't say fuck it because you're here and you have to be here. So might as well do the damn thing, you know. Where do you stand on animal rights and stuff like that? I like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm mean, because, like you a, know, hardcore is, is a scene yeah. where people, you know, care about stuff like yeah. that, you know. So I, just... I mean, I eat meat. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not... I'm not a big vegan vegetarian guy, but I like dogs. You know, like I like dogs, I like I like animals. I just I like them. I like birds. I like, you know, it's it is what it is, but cows are good. They taste good. You know, I can't help it. <laughs> Sorry, PETA. Damn, I was just going to try to make you do a PETA now. No. 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 I mean, animal rights, it's I hate going to pet stores, you know, in shopping centers, and I hate going to the zoo because it bums me out. But it has a lot to do with the whole, uh, you know, hating the human race thing as well, doesn't it? Because um, I mean, we're to blame, so yeah, it's well, part of it. And there's nothing we can do. You, you think you're ever going to stop being angry? No, <laughs> maybe when I die. Um, but no, I don't think. There's too much anger inside me to ever be exhausted. The happiness goes away. Oh, I can just throw it away, whatever. But the anger is always going to be coursing through my veins, I think. 
feel you have, I mean, like you said, you've been around for a, for a long time now um, in, the, in the scene with the music and everything. Um, of course, you have changed. And how, um, how do you view the world now compared to um, what you did 10 years ago? I'm more soft now than I ever was. Oh, okay. I mean, 10 years ago, I was 19. So I was just, you know, oh my God, I'm gonna be 20 soon and all that. You know, I didn't know, I didn't really think about anything. You know, I just was angry, I was like, bah. But as you get older, and ask anybody who's angry, any, as you get older, you just get angrier. And just like, after, after all these years, like, stuff is just getting worse and worse. And like, all that anger just builds up inside of you. And you, like I said, I could never get rid of it. I could play a hundred shows a day and it would still just be right here because you know you just walk outside open the door walk outside and there's 10 things i can name right off the bat that just make piss me off you know isn't it exhausting <sighs> yeah i sleep a lot <laughs> I, I also drink a lot of coke zero there's a plug <laughs> where do you see yourselves going with uh with the music and everything with being angry uh, it's just gonna get angrier and angrier until it's so angry it implodes on itself. Um, I don't know, really. I mean, I'm just gonna keep doing it until it either stops being fun or it implodes on itself, really. I mean, once we get to the point where we feel like we should call it quits and we're gonna do it, but that's not gonna be for a long time, so. Sorry, Germany, we're gonna be around forever. I think most people are happy about that. Yeah? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank talking you. to us. Awesome.